Hello, I think that's time. Uh, my name is Sveta Smirnova, and uh, you see on this slide another name. Alexander Rubin is uh, principal architect at Percona, and uh, actually he uh, was the person who uh, made uh, most of work on these slides. Uh, he ran uh, tests, uh, he uh, measured this time and his results. Unfortunately, he could not come, uh, so this is why uh, only me is here. Uh, Okay, uh, so what uh, will we talk, uh, talk about today? Uh, will we talk about Apache Spark, uh, why and how to use it? Uh, uh, it's, I will focus on uh, words, how to use it uh, together with uh, MySQL. And for example, uh, we use uh, Wikistates, example, uh, Wikistates analysis. This is a free uh, database available for download. It's about uh, 10 terabyte. Uh, so what is Spark? If compared to MySQL, you see this picture, it's uh, like for MySQL timers, my probably a full picture. You see, let's uh, how MySQL works. So first, your application sends uh, a request, and then MySQL has to uh, parse it, has to validate it, has to optimize it, sends it to storage engine. Uh, if it needs to save results, it has to write uh, it up to file system and return results and process, it uh, does everything. Uh, so this with big work. Uh, Spark, in contrast, does only uh, computing. It uh, only, only computing. It um, uh, sends to third party, like Amazon S3, local file systems, and MySQL. Uh, and actually, many, many, it supports many, many backends. It's just only computing, but does it in parallel. And this is uh, uh, why you need it. Uh, so why you need it? You need it. It's uh, most use case is um, uh, processing uh, big um, like uh, uh, big data in a single query, which uh, for MySQL this is uh, uh, not the best thing to do, and I will describe here later why. Uh, what is uh, about Spark? It's um, uh, there are there are like old file uh, like uh, FAQ like uh, you have. Uh, um, uh, you have to uh, have uh, enough memory for full data set. This is not true. Uh, Spark processes uh, data in memory, but it likes it's mostly like как, like MySQL with caches. Uh, it also has direct access to data sources, including uh, MySQL and can be any. Uh, can store uh, data in uh, S uh, distributed file system. It's uh, Hadoop HDFS and uh, a local file system. Uh, places it has na native python and r integration but uh, this is massively parallel this is most important thing about spark it's uh, can uh, compute uh, compute in uh, multiple threads and also it can compute uh, distribute on multiple nodes so you can scale on a single machine on multiple cores and you can also scale on multiple machines so this is uh, 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 increasing uh, parallel so let's compare uh, Spark with MySQL. Uh, so uh, imagine you need to uh, process a big query with MySQL. Uh, so what you will need, uh, you will have indexes, you will uh, like to have indexes. Uh, you will also have uh, partitioning and uh, what is for, uh, for single query, MySQL will just read, uh, uh, read data from one partition if you uh, uh, created it uh, properly, wisely. There is also possible sharding, which is uh, not built in, but you can implement sharding with MySQL. Uh, SPAR, in uh, its case, it doesn't have indexes, and I will describe later why. Uh, it has uh, partitioning, but partitioning not in MySQL case, but you can process, like you can uh, partition your data, and you can uh, cal calculate, uh, perform calculation on every partition in parallel. It also, instead of sharding, it has like a kind of map reduce architecture, so it sends uh, processing request on different nodes. Uh, so why no indexes? Uh, so what is the biggest issue with MySQL? So it's uh, one query, it's uh, one core. So it can, uh, MySQL, you can use multiple cores if you have many queries. But it cannot use uh, multiple, uh, multiple cores uh, if you have uh, only one um, 
uh, one query if you like have like uh, terab terabytes of petabytes of data and for uh, this uh, table you just uh, uh, and you have it's only one query you will use one one cpu core no, ma no, no matter how much your machine has uh, for Spark, it uh, has no indexes. It's just practically full table scan. Uh, but its full table scan is, uh, scans only part of tables in uh, in uh, multiple threads and in a parallel. So it's if you have like uh, if you have like uh, one machine with multiple cores, it's you can uh, have data that's split on uh, parts and uh, scan them in parallel by every core. If you have uh, multiple nodes, you can have uh, multiple nodes. Uh, you can split data by uh, dif uh, differently on them, and again, perform this cal calculation on these nodes. And again, each node can have uh, calculation in parallel. Uh, this uh, leads to high latency, because after this uh, result set is uh, processed, you have to combine it into single result. So it's, uh, it will take, actually, its latency depends from um, no, it's like uh, for any MySQL cluster, it's like uh, nodes uh, have, have to communicate. Uh, so why is uh, Spark uh, doesn't use indexes? Well, um, it's, uh, uh, how many of you work with indexes in MySQL? So I think you can imagine what happens what, if you create the index for petabyte of data, or if you update index, or if you uh, just uh, read a terabyte index. <laughs> not, not fast, not fast. Full scan in parallel could be much easier. Okay, so uh, ETL pipeline, so what is um, extract transform load, transform load. So in MySQL it works like you can extract data from source, uh, transform it before loading, uh, so this uh, before loading, because it must be valid and must be in format which MySQL understand, and only then insert into MySQL. So you will spend uh, a lot of time uh, here. No, it's also, also here because you will uh, load uh, petabytes of data, and on the, only after that you can actually process your data. For Spark, you can, uh, again, you are extracting data, you don't save anything, uh, but then you can just load, you don't transform it. So this is, uh, you load data as you get it, so you don't need to, to spend time here, but then you can, after returning results to clients, you can transform, analyze, visualize, and do it, everything in parallel here. Uh, so that's called difference, like MySQL is scheme of right. Uh, this is, that means um, when you load data, it has validated, it uh, has performed con conversion, sometimes indirect, and also it, ha it will fail if something wrong with your data. And also, if it's like science, uh, no, it's actually it's modern MySQL storage engines are uh, like in a DBR transactional, and uh, you uh, it will have rollbacks this transaction, so it will spend time. Mm, so if you have like you lo loaded only partial of that, it's maybe nightmare. Uh, for uh, Spark, it's scheme on read, so there is no lo load data per se, so it can just like. Uh, uh, are sync to nodes or are sync to data or just read it. And when it's validate data on read, it's transform data on read. And even if it's something goes wrong on the step, it's much cheaper, cheaper to reject. So you just reject, you don't have to discard anything. Uh, example. For our example, it's, uh, we took uh, Vika States uh, database, which is uh, available from this URL. It has uh, Wikipedia page uh, access counts. Its uh, base uh, file is uh, this is uh, file is uh, greater than 10 terabytes. And here is uh, how it can be downloaded into MySQL. So it's load data in file, insert into table, fields terminated by. Uh, it also has a transformation. So that's uh, slow down things a little bit too. And how much uh, will it take? Uh, it will take, uh, for an ADB, it took, uh, will take 50 seconds, for MISA, um, 11 seconds. So one hour it will take one minute, and uh, one year will take six days, and six year, uh, years will take uh, greater than uh, one month to load. Uh, loading uh, wiki state in, uh, to Spark will be much more easy. It's just uh, copy files to, to, to any storage you like, and then uh, create SQL over a structure over it. 
or uh, create uh, read the CVS or aggregate it and transform it and load it, for example, in MySQL, but process in parallel. So uh, you have like uh, not all 10 terabytes, but only data you need uh, for this. Uh, here is an example. It's uh, not uh, our example. It's example. It's Spark Summit uh, about loading data into Spark. It's without MySQL involvement. It took uh, 45 uh, uh, seconds for scanning the four and a half uh, terabytes of data. Impressive. Uh, why? Because pipelines. Uh, it's it's better to co compare with pipelines. Well, MySQL it's one pipeline, and Spark it's like multiple, multiple, multiple. So much bigger throughput. It's much uh, uh, more job can be done at the same time. Uh, so how Spark works? Uh, here on the left in the uh, green boxes, it's uh, how we will process uh, MySQL um, uh, MySQL query, MySQL build query. First we run uh, select. And uh, for uh, Spark, it will just like uh, lines uh, read file. So no nothing uh, much here. Then uh, we run where uh, for, uh, for um, uh, Spark, this will be uh, like um, ma mapping them, uh, we, we, which lines are we are going to read. Uh, then uh, for group by, it's uh, uh, it's uh, practically a data processing, and the uh, out file we will write to either like in first row is to um, MySQL, and second row is we can write like, for example, to parquet file, this is uh, column and storage. And actually there are many uh, backends which we can uh, save data to. Uh, here is example of how to save results to MySQL. This is, uh, I think, uh, um, uh, so ju uh, just uh, uh, pre pretty easy. And uh, here are what happens after you run this code. So it's show process list output. So I think it explains a lot. It's, it's, so uh, this uh, Spark uh, split all uh, the data into uh, multiple requests and uh, uh, they are massively parallel. So we are it's now here with uh, Spark, MySQL can use, um, can explore its own ways and uh, it's explore multiple CPU cores. And uh, here is the confirmation. Uh, so multiple CPU cores and uh, uh, that's, uh, I think it's with pretty easy code. Uh, uh, for, besides it's expressing, it's, um, uh, there is a uh, pSpark shell which allows you to monitor uh, Spark job. Uh, this is, it has nice uh, graphical user interface, so you can uh, see what is going on. And uh, practically, you can uh, find out uh, what happens with particular job. This uh, job file it with because table was full, but you can read it what happens here. Okay, so we uh, put all the uh, data into, uh, uh, into uh, we read all wiki, wiki states, and uh, now let's uh, try to use Spark uh, for reads and for uh, data analysis. Uh, for this comparing, uh, which we want to know, that's, uh, uh, we want to find uh, 10 most uh, frequent, uh, frequently uh, queried, uh, uh, queried wiki pages in uh, January 2008. And for MySQL, it took uh, to receive only this 10 rows, took one hour 22 minutes. And uh, with uh, Spark, it took uh, uh, less, uh, less time, it's 20 minutes. Impressive. Okay, uh, so what else? So it's also uh, we have like um, uh, this talk, it's about Apache Drill. Uh, you can also use Apache Drill. This Apache Drill is um, a little bit uh, competing uh, solution, but also can uh, use together. It allows to access uh, data, uh, data sources differently and uh, uh, treat them as SQL. It can uh, query, uh, query MongoDB with SQL, it uh, can query um, both MySQL and MongoDB compile, uh, combine results together. So that's uh, another great tool for uh, data analysis. Magic? 
uh, quite not easy. It's um, uh, just to recap, um, uh, MySQL and uh, Spark are, are um, uh, MySQL and Spark are uh, different, and um, uh, what is the difference? So, uh, what's uh, you know these two two five points? So, MySQL it's uh, searches um, uh, full data set, uh, which must uh, which may be prefiltered and not aggregated, but for Spark data set is already. That means that uh, it's just can read any data set for. Um, uh, uh, prepare it from application, from file. It can be filtered like only on site, like in case if you uh, share data on um, uh, geographically and so on. Uh, MySQL doesn't support uh, parallelism uh, if you run a single query. Uh, Spark uh, supports parallelism and it also supports parallelism on all levels from uh, having from uh, multiple cores on single machine and to uh, multiple nodes. Uh, uh, MySQL is based on index. Um, Spark is not based on index, but uh, having it uh, does everything in parallel, this uh, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't, uh, it is, 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 is not bad. It, it's uh, work uh, good for uh, big data. For in a DB, if like, uh, if you, um, I think uh, we have, um, uh, it's uh, for an, uh, for uh, for uh, MySQL. It doesn't have. No, it's actually uh, it has uh, column storage. I think it's MariaDB. But uh, even uh, in any case, it has to uh, uh, has to convert data into co column storage. For example, so this is uh, in the between between uh, this. And uh, in Spark, if you want uh, columnar storage, you can get it uh, just like uh, specifying like uh, par uh, work if you want to work like in a solution like Parquet, but not with MySQL. Uh, partitioning uh, for MySQL, it's for single query. That means, no, it's actually for anyway, it means like uh, partition use it only to uh, select, uh, uh, select uh, data, which is uh, uh, to, do it to access. And if you like uh, need to process data from two par partitions, you cannot. You will process data from one partition and then from another. For uh, Spark uh, partitioning, you will uh, process uh, data from both partitions in, at the same time and then combine results. So, in my opinion, that's uh, you can. Uh, if you need to work with big data, if you need to make uh, big analysis, uh, combining this together can uh, get uh, best results. It's a luxury of SQL. It's easy to use SQL. It's uh, uh, which we prefer to use, and uh, massively uh, parallelism, which makes it uh, really uh, that such queries really efficient. Thank you. Uh, it's actually you can use uh, s s no almost same uh, dialect where like MySQL. It's it's not it's it's not like my school. It's not like exactly my school dialect, but. Thank you, Sveta. Thank you, Alex, if he sees us on the streaming.